We're back, day three of theCUBE's coverage of HPE Discover 2023 in steamy Las Vegas, Dave Vellante with Rob Streche. Brent Schroeder is here, he's a strategic technology and product development executive at SUSE. Let's talk open source. Absolutely. Good to see you, man, thanks for Good coming on. Good to be on. here. Yeah, I'm, yes. I'm excited about this because I, I, I was bringing it up earlier to some of the folks around here, and actually yeah. to Fidelma, we had an analyst session with her, and I'm like, uh -huh. we just haven't spoken about open source that much uh -huh. this week, and yeah. I, I think it's, it's so, open source is basically one from that layer with yeah. Kubernetes, and uh, you know, really Linux is just the foundation of a lot of yeah. things. So well, it's hard to it's, talk about the industry these days without talking about open source. It really is, it right? Is. I mean, and we did uh, we did come up in our interview with the the folks from Esmeral, the Esmeral, yeah. folks, but it wasn't yes. front and center. Um, and so let's let's bring it forward. Absolutely. What's the what's the update on SUSE? Well, this week we've been here talking about um, you know how we're working with. HP on edge to cloud. Um, actually, you guys commented an observation from the keynote earlier in the week that uh, cloud native seemed to be missing from the message. Yes. And uh, you know we're here to help with the cloud native environment. So in the last you know, few months, we've gotten uh, SUSE's K3S um, as the default Kubernetes platform in uh, GreenLake Edge as a Service. Um, we've got RKE2 as an option for GreenLake's uh, private cloud enterprise. Uh, and then Rancher Manager, obviously is available uh, to manage those, and we've now made Rancher Manager available in uh, GreenLake's uh, on online market. Yep. That so. makes a lot of sense. I think that, especially where Rancher has always had a really strong following, yes. and is that really where you're seeing a lot of the up uptick with SUSE since that acquisition of Rancher and how it's been integrated back in, is that really where the strength of it comes, is that automation? Yeah, and a lot of our conversations are about that modernization to cloud native. Yeah. Um, but then also companies have a tremendous amount of traditional uh, still in play, right? That's not going away for years, yeah. decades. Yeah. Uh, and so we got to provide both. And so how do we secure it? How do we make it enterprise ready? Um, you know, that's really the focus. So what's happening at the edge? I mean, I've been having discussions, Rob and I, and Lisa as well this week, around well, what is edge, right? I mean, even the colo is now considered an edge to the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get the near edge, a retail store, you know, yeah. a, 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 and then the far edge, you know, space. We yeah. talked about space, so. Pretty much what anywhere. You, yeah, what are you seeing in, in, in edge? It seems really obviously fragmented yeah. and somewhat disjointed, but you as a horizontal well, technology company have Yeah, let me tell you a little bit about how we're that. trying to pull that together. Right. You know, Basel was here last year yeah. uh, and kind of introduced yeah. our, our entry into an edge solution. Right. Uh, and we talked about you know, how are we going to simplify onboarding, uh, the entire management stack, uh, and securing that. And since then, we delivered our Edge 2.0 solution, uh, which brought that all together. Um, what, is, what does that mean, Edge 2.0? So Edge 2.0 is, is, you've talked about fragmentation, mm -hmm. right? And, and let's say disparate building blocks. So what we wanted to do is bring this as a, an experience to manage the edge and, and deploy and secure the edge. So we can onboard a remote device securely, install the operating system, do the full stack on top of that, and then lifecycle manage that entire thing. And whether the device is in space, on an oil rig, in a car, or back getting data back to the cloud, we can manage that application portfolio across that spectrum. Uh, you know, I'd, when I talk to customers about it, uh, you know, I really talk about edge, as, it's, it's not edge as an island. You know, edge is a continuum, and actually much of the, the, the theme of the keynote, uh, again, was, connecting the edge to the cloud. Um, neither of them can no, any longer exist in isolation, um, and so our solutions are about bringing that together. My first uh, Mobile World Congress was in 2021 during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. There was like, you know, Mobile World Congress, usually hundreds of thousand people there. There were maybe 10,000, right? And yeah. It was just us and a thing called Cloud City. But the big trend was, that year was cloud, and then we went this past year, and the whole trend around the disaggregation of the telco stack was so obvious and palatable. Um, so how do you play in telco? That's obviously a key yep. part of the edge. Yep. Maybe give us the update there. Yeah, we are working uh, with many of the edge, or the telco providers, especially in Europe. Uh, Orange, George Telecom, right. uh, Ericsson, et cetera, close partners of ours. 
uh, and working on developing a platform. Um, we actually announced uh, a uh, advanced uh, telco information platform uh, earlier this year that's part of our edge solution and that's working with those vendors on what are the building blocks um, that are needed uh, and that they want to have as a common framework across the telcos so that we can eliminate or minimize fragmentation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, let them add value uh, on top of that. Um, and so building that common platform is really key. Um, and then the, one of the challenges that the telcos have is, and many people in, in um, cloud native is the velocity with which things change. Right. Uh, well, if you've deployed a big infrastructure, hard to keep um, up. Yeah. You don't. You can't be changing on a daily basis, right? You have to have some degree of, of consistency and changing on a, a more methodical manner. So that's really what our platform's about. Yeah, and the telco infrastructure is for those of you who don't know. I mean, it's fossilized. I mean, it's in there. <laughs> it's the entire stack, and it doesn't move. Yeah. And that's why, it, and you, when you listen to the telco execs, they'll say things like. We, with 5G, we can't let this happen again, and what they mean is we can't let the over-the-top vendors like Netflix <laughs> come in and take all our, you know, our business away. Right. And so they have to have a flexible I I infrastructure in order to be able to develop applications. Now, Absolutely. whether or not they can do that, because they got a great business in connectivity, but uh -huh. you know, it takes a mindset in. But I think they've certainly got the resources, and, yeah. and, and they learned a lot from mm -hmm. the last era. So do you see the telcos sort of beginning to to get it right? Are they in a position from a developer standpoint to really I, take advantage of I think of so, it? I think they've really embraced the notion of cloud native uh, architecture and containers and what containers can deliver. Right. Um, so that they can deliver more rapidly and it's not fixed for 10 years. Right. right? That they can add incremental capabilities you know, as they're made available. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think one of the things when you talk about telco is resiliency, and efficiency, yeah. especially in security. Those yep. three at the edge, because, yep. hey, I may not be, you know, it may not be in my premise, it may be somewhere else where it could be accessed, accessed yeah. or something of that nature. Right. How does that play into what you're doing in the edge strategy? Well, uh, if I interpret that correctly, yeah. kind of where I think there's a big s intersection is we look at our next generation, so edge 3.0. Yeah. Um, we're focused on two areas. Um, industrial IOT uh, and better enabling that, uh, and then mission critical edge. So we talk about life cycle management and criticality of the edge. There's many scenarios where, you know, I think when ed people started to go into edge, it was almost viewed as a disposable right. type of item, right? Um, but when you start talking about automotive, telco, healthcare, um, those are not disposable <laughs> uh, scenarios, right? No. You know, our interaction with the customers is, this needs to be up seven by 24, um, and it's got to have the highest degrees of resiliency, um, yet we want to deliver new capabilities on top of it, right? So those two tug against each other. Um, so as we look at Mission Critical Edge, it'll be a combination of um, our enterprise infrastructure that we've got you know, 30 years of experience building, um, plus collaboration with our customers in uh, pre-deployment uh, uh, validation in security integration uh, and continual uh, runtime validation to ensure that they're adhering to best practices um, and always at the, at the right level, so. Yeah, yeah and that's uh, why things like, you know, people are so cautious about you know, open RAN because you know, it, it doesn't necessarily give them. You think about the telco network, it doesn't go down. I mean, even no. during the pandemic, when everything shifted, to, or a lot of it shifted to landlines, you didn't yeah. even notice a, a, you know, a beat. But um, what are the, what's the hardest part, from your perspective, of, of the edge? What are those pain points that people are experiencing, and how can you two, help and maybe yeah. bring HPE back into the discussion? Probably two biggest, two hardest parts. Mm -hmm. uh, managing at scale. Um, it's one thing to go in a lab or even in a, in a small region and, and do a dozen or a hundred um, endpoints and devices. It's a totally different game when it's you know, 5,000, 10,000, uh, you can imagine 100,000 clusters and how do you manage that? Uh, that's absolutely one of those. Um, and then when we get to the, to the far edge and, and really almost disconnected edge, one of the things we're seeing with our customers, and this kind of brings HP back into it and discussions we're having, is edge as a service, right? If there's no IT people 
um, at an oil rig, right? Uh, so how do we help those, those types of customers with the life cycle management? So they would like to see it as, hey, just bring me Edge as a service and we'll manage the applications. Uh, get us the infrastructure, the operating system, the, the whole platform, make sure that it's secure, that we can onboard it securely, and, and then operate its life cycle you know, wherever and, and whenever it needs to be uh, managed. Well, so. security is, is an interesting topic at the edge too, because I mean, by, by default it's been air-gapped, uh, you know, many, in, in many cases. Many cases, All yeah. these years, yeah. and then all of a sudden the business says, oh, we got to connect. <laughs> and the engineers go, whoa, wait a minute, yeah. and so it's a complicated situation. It is. I mean, we still find, it is, um, we've got to have kind of that bimodal model because in some places you get 5G connectivity, right? Yeah, right. Um, walk 10 steps over and you lost that 5G right. connectivity, but uh, we also have you know, companies that are telling us we've got to be able to do an air gap to model. So, for example, one uh, big you know, customer partner of ours is Home Depot, right? One of their, as they rolled out Edge, one of their key requirements is, you know, our stores are located where there's natural disasters. And our customers rely on us the most when there's a natural disaster. Well, what's the problem when there's a natural, natural disaster? There's no connectivity, yeah, right. right? Hurricanes take out all the communications, there's no towers left. Uh, so they, have, they want to make sure that resiliency and and continuing to operate in a disconnected environment um, is critical to them. So. And, and I, I think we heard also this week that you, uh, there was a product called Harvester. Uh -huh. Can you go into what that is? And I mean, Absolutely. it's a super interesting name, I, yep. I would say. You know? <laughs> yeah, so in, the, in the spirit of the rancher model yeah. right now, harvesting. Yep, oh yeah, um, there you so go. We're, <laughs> we're using the, the, the analogy and, and continuing that. But so what Harvester is, is we really could try to rethink um, hyperconverged infrastructure. You know, hyperconverged infrastructure started you know, a decade and a half ago uh, from a virtual world. Um, and then as containers started to come along, it was more of how do we bolt v containers onto a virtual model? Uh, and we thought, hey, this, this is backwards. Why don't we just jump forward to the container world um, and support virtual machines on a cloud native architecture. Mm -hmm. So that's what Harvester is all about. Um, it's containers at the, at the base, um, and we can run uh, virtual machines um, in that context, and we manage them from a rancher environment, just as if they were a cloud native entity. So uh, it's, it's helping people with that migration, that migration tra yes. transition. Because uh, there's very few that are, you get a perfect greenfield switch over, right? Um, and so let's bring this to edge. You know, I want to deploy a new edge solution. Uh, and you know, I've got most of the application is written from the ground up, and then I've got a security app from a vendor yeah. uh, that wrote the app 15 years ago in a virtual machine, and they don't have plans and, uh, to containerize it. Well, how do you get that in there? Right. So you might have a full cloud native infrastructure, and you need one or two virtual machines. Well, Harvester's a perfect match um, for that, because now it lets you use a common management paradigm to manage that entire experience at the edge. Excellent, yeah, makes right. sense. I, I think that's one of the hardest is how do you keep your skills gap as low as possible? And mm -hmm. as people go to cloud native, yeah. they're bringing people on with these new skill sets who may not be as experienced with VMs and right. things of that yeah. nature. Yeah, true. Is that something yeah. you're seeing out there is that the people are really uh, embracing and I guess you could say building their teams differently to take advantage of Edge? Yeah, edge and cloud native. Yeah. Uh, so the you know the edge teams have largely stayed the same, but then they've brought in the expertise. Right. Right. So probably the expertise gap is in the cloud native space as they ramp up and retrain and learn right. um, to how to do that. Uh, you know, one of the things we're doing to help address that is um, we've stuck our foot in the AI space. Um, and so this week at SUSACON, uh, some of the new capabilities we announced about Rancher are the introduction of AI, um, both the generative AI in the ability in a Rancher assistant to naturally language interact with the help system so that if you're new 
into cloud native and the rancher and containers and you're getting error messages and you're like, what is this? I don't have any idea what to do about it. Uh, you can just interact with it and we'll give you, guide you through the resolution of that problem. Um, and then we're also applying AI to the observability layer um, so that we can improve the, the mean time to detection of an issue uh, and, and kind of take that out of the manual mode where you know, it's nice that observability exists. That's a very common term, right? right. Um, so it brings stats from all of these different systems and now I'm just blurry eyed because of all the data I've got. Um, and so we have to apply AI to that to make it manageable and, and improve that. So we, we think we'll get a pretty dramatic improvement in productivity and, and mean time to resolve uh, issues with these new introductions. I mean, to, your, to your first point, uh, the cloud turned the data center into an API and, and GPT is going to turn technology yeah. into a natural language interface. Yeah, exactly. Brent, great to have you back on the, yeah, on been, the Cube. It's good to yeah, see you, thank absolutely. you. Absolutely, I thoroughly enjoyed it. All right. Okay, Rob Streche and Dave Vellante, we'll be back right after this short break. This is the HPE Discover Day 3, the Cube's continuous coverage. Up next is Bobby Ford, who's the Chief Security Officer at HPE. He's an unbelievably dynamic individual. You're not going to want to miss this. We'll be right back.